Hello, Modality here, and uh, thank you for watching my last video, Merchant of the Skies, after I'm changing it up when it comes to production. But when it comes with this game, Airborne Kingdom, I'm very excited to tell you that this game is extremely fun, but it is different than Merchant of the Sky. As in, Merchant of the Skies is a trading sim, and this game, Airborne Kingdom, is a city builder and management game. So when it comes to it being very weird that I find myself playing two games that are very similar and that you're building huge mega structures within the skies, I will say that they are drastically different games and you should treat them so when playing Airborne Kingdom or when playing Merchant of the Skies. So with that, let me just get into the pros and cons about this game. First off, you start the game reading tapestry of a secret technology to create a utopia. And basically that's the start of the game. You rise up with your one mega furnace powerhouse structure that is basically the core of your entire city very similar to how the heater of the furnace in Frostpunk is the heart of your city very similar and that is where you actually store your coal resources which is what you use to power everything to keep the city afloat on top of that there's the common water and food that you need to meet your civilians' needs. And your civilians' needs go from completely angry at you and may leave and jubilant. And jubilant is basically when all their needs are met. You basically progress to points, key points in the story, and then let's say the citizens would gather together to a new population goal mark, which is like, you know, like 100, 200, 300. It just keeps going on to that until you get to the goal of being an airborne kingdom, right? Title of the game. And each of those marks will give a new need to your population. May that be comfort, which is fixed by having trees around, or faith, which is fixed by churches, or health, which is fixed by nurses, and so on. It just keeps going like that, where it keeps adding to the point where you can make a fully self-sufficient kingdom in the skies in this game. When it comes to being able to fly around, have a hangar where people have airplanes and click on these gathering nodes and see them all work together and walk down the streets and pick up, let's say, wood and stone to make bricks and crystals to make glass. It is a very relaxing game and I give it 100% in the aspect that if the developer's intent was to make this extremely relaxing and very calming, they've completely succeeded with that. I will say towards the end of the game, there is a brand new area because of course I'm not playing this game at release. They've added a brand new update where the game does not become as relaxing and calming as you might think and becomes way more hard on your brain to process as well as rewarding when it comes to finally figuring out a system that works with the ship you've ordered already built. And when it comes to upgrades and research, I do love that you could just keep building basically research centers to cut the research time of all these nodes in half every single time to the point where you could just research everything and be done with it and then get rid of the academies. I also like that this game doesn't really have a time frame for you as if you really wanted to, you could just research all the technologies, all the efficiency booths, all of the repair booths, you know, get the upgrade where if you delete a building, you get all the resources back. So you could just move around the building as much as you want to work with a very cool mechanic that I've never seen in the game called tilt where basically if you make it you know too heavy on the front the left side the back side it will tell you the tilt and angle and yaw of your building and you have to keep it stable or your citizens will be very pissed now there is a way that is like a very powerful item that you can build at the end of the game to basically make that never an issue but that is to the very end of the game where you have to find these buildings called wonders and when you find all three you'll get this you'll get a very special structure you can build that will give you insane you could call godlike powers for a city builder game and makes your life a lot easier when it comes to getting to the end game content that I will not spoil but I will say definitely gives me Frostpunk vibes which I am super for in that that is my favorite city management game I've ever played in my lifetime so when it comes to Airborne Kingdom I will say the only cons is that basically when you're going from one place to the other and trying to find these wonders I I kind of wish there was another way to find them because realistically I just searched it up on Google to find them. They are very hidden in certain areas where the fog is so bad that you would have to comb through areas, very, very foggy areas over and over again till you find it if you just didn't Google search like I did. I recommend just doing that. And for this game though, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. There's not much to talk about this game because realistically the food management, the water management, building stuff to build other things to craft and trade, it's 
was pretty obvious to a lot of people. So when it comes to me recommending the game to you, it's only if you like city management games and if you really like the Prince of Persia style. I am very much looking forward to Airborne Empire because Kingdom is very relaxing and that there is no enemy that you are facing. But in Empire, there's going to be full on other ships you are going to have to be fighting. And there's going to be a whole combat element that will be basically included into the game, which I feel like will make the experience more full as it is now. I hope you sleep well. I hope you get good rest and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.